Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Kent countryside and welcome to a road test that I've been looking forward to ever since I heard that this bike was getting announced. This is the Fantic Caballero 700, the latest bike in the Fantic Caballero range and an extension of the other bikes that are already here. We've got Caballeros in 125cc and 500cc variants. They've got Rally, they've got Explorer and they've got Scrambler. Um, and this is kind of the, the biggest bike they've done so far and we have spent all day today hammering about some B roads, done some light green lanes, sort of fire trail kind of off-roading, and just generally been having an absolute hoot on some B roads on a beautifully glorious summer's day here in the southeast of England. So like I said, it's an extension of the Caballero family, but it is not the same bike as the 500 that has come before it. Obviously, there are some big differences. The main one is everything. So the frame of this bike is all new, the suspension, the swing arm, um, but the bodywork, the styling is you know the same you can tell it's in the caballero family but the styling is slightly tweaked over the the other model the biggest change though is this lump of steel which is of course the cp2 engine uh that has been borrowed from yamaha tweaked by fantip and then injected into this sort of new frame that we've got here so over and above the yamaha's engine that you find on the mt07 the xsr 700 and the tenue 700 for instance it's got a different intake it's got a different exhaust it's also got a slightly different mapping and the final drive for the gearing has been altered and tweaked as well. Overall, it makes a little bit more power. Out on the road today, I thought it felt a bit gutsier at the bottom end. It feels a bit more torquey right down low, um, but you haven't lost any of that punch at the top end, which was one of the things that made the CP2 engine just so enjoyable to ride on the road, was you kind of had it all. Low end grunt, lots of mid range and a rush to the top, but this is, feels a little bit gutsier, I think, which is a combination of the changes, the intake, the exhaust, and also the slightly different gearing that the bike has got. Compared to the, the 500 then, so we've got the new frame, we've got Marzocchi uh, suspension, we've got Brembo brakes, which are an upgrade on the 500, which gets by Bray. I know they're by Brembo, but they're slightly upgraded. Uh, caliper, 330 mil diff. We've got 150 millimeters of suspension travel at both ends um, on this particular model. And although it is styled as a scrambler, it's styled as a sort of a pseudo off-roader, Fantic aren't really billing it as that. They're billing it more as a street a street bike, a street scrambler that's got some off-road ability. Now I took it off-road today. Um, it was very light green lane. It wasn't particularly rough, but it was gravel tracks. Um, you've got switchable traction control. You've got two riding modes, road and off-road, and you can switch off the ABS as well. On that front, it's all very simple and refreshingly so, actually. You've got uh, adventure bikes and middleweight adventure bikes and everything else that we've got in the market at the minute is so technically minded it's got so many modes and so many things you can tweak and eight levels of drift control and all this sort of stuff just be able to get on a bike and if you want to just get on a bike and ride it as it is and be absolutely fine is great but then you've got this extra little bit where if you just want to turn everything off you can do and that's what we did once we hit the rough stuff and we had an absolute ball you can slide this thing around it doesn't feel all at sea the suspension's probably just on the firm side of being off-road suspension it's not really really compliant and soft but then once you transition from riding on the dirt to get back onto the road you've got a really nice base underneath you where you can go about and play about on a b road and do some wheelies and do some skids and and have a bit of fun if i've got one critique actually i've got two slight critiques of it a bit like the mto7 really the throttle connection on this is um just when i first got on it the very initial part of the throttle opening can sometimes be a bit jerky there was a the first couple of t-junctions that we pulled out of from fantix hq uh down just outside of Canterbury. the first couple i was a little bit jerky and it was a combination of the bike's only got 167 miles on it so the clutch is really really um you know you're straight into the meat of the clutch and the throttle connection and it was just a little bit took a bit of getting used to but once you've got that finessed out and you're delicate with the bike when you're pulling away not a problem whatsoever the other slight critique that I've got is I did find the seat to be a little bit hard. It is a sort of a style over substance seat. They've got to go with the overall shape of the bike and the style and that look that they're going for with this particular machine. So they've really got to go with a bench seat of that type, which they nailed on the styling front. But after about three or four hours in the saddle, I was starting to get a bit of a numb bum. That said, how many people are going to do many more miles than that without taking, stopping and taking a break? You've got a 13 litre fuel tank. Um, which is going to mean that you're probably going to be getting 150 to 160 miles of spirited riding for what it is. I think it's great. I mean, I was really looking forward to riding this bike because the 500 Caballeros are such fun bikes. Really enjoyable to ride on the road. They've not got bags of power, but they don't need bags of power. 
what they've got is bags of character. They've just kind of increased that with this one. This bike is, I found it, more playful, yet more refined. The CP2 motor is going to go down in history as one of the best parallel twin cylinder engines ever made. Putting it in a bike like this is an absolute no-brainer, given the leaks that Fantic have got with Minarelli and Yamaha. And, you know, there's, there's, there's things going on behind the scenes there that mean the two companies can kind of work together in this way. But the engine is fantastic. The chassis feels lovely and balanced. It's 175 kg um, wet without fuel. So getting on for 180, 180, 190 kilograms when fully fueled up, really, really playful. The, the MT-07 is a playful bike. The XSR 700 is a very playful bike. This feels just as playful, but because of the componentry and the detailing and the chassis just feels altogether nicer, just feels like an altogether more complete package um that you 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 know you can really really have some fun on this bike and i was thoroughly impressed with how well it performed out on the road and also on the trail a lot of fun now i've said that it's a slightly more refined feel it's a slightly more premium feel than the mt07 or the xsr 700 there is a very good reason for that and that is because it is a little bit more money it's about nine thousand uh it's 9699 i think on the road um in this form that you can see behind me here so it's quite a step up in price, but when you get up close and personal and you have a little look around the bike and you look at some of the, the CNC machining, uh, the aluminium, the, you know, the way that it's finished, the fit and the finish of it is really, really nice. The headstock's got a nice little Caballero um, engraving into the billet top yoke. Just quite a nice place to be. And you do, the more you look around the bike, there are these little Easter eggs that are kind of hidden around it that you kind of find that you didn't spot at first, like the kind of the carbon fiber over the exhaust down there. There's just some really nice touches um, that Fantec have pulled out, obviously an Italian company, so they're always thinking about that sort of thing, but it is a very nice thing to look at, but that doesn't stop when you swing your leg over it and you start riding it. It's also a hell of a lot of fun to ride. So the braking system on this, I mentioned it earlier, is uh, provided by Brembo. You've got a 330mm disc up front. It is a single disc, and I'm gonna say there isn't masses of initial bite. It could be down to the pad compound that they've used, that said, it is a very nice progressive lever feel, and if you're a newer rider um, looking to get onto a bigger bike for the first time and you wanted something with a little bit of style, that kind of nice progressive lever feel is probably going to be something that you'd quite enjoy. It is a single disc though, so um, the, the overall power you do have to really sort of work at it if you do want to um, slow the thing down. It's got cornering ABS as well, which is quite nice. Um, in this segment, there are some that have and some that haven't, so it's quite nice to see at this price point especially. And you can, as I said earlier on, you can switch off the ABS to the rear wheel. So when you go off road or if you're just on road and you want to do some skids, you can turn all of that off and go and have a play. So there we are. That is my day with Fantix's new Caballero 700. Um, I did kind of, I was thinking this was going to be a bit of style over substance, uh, the bike in, in it all, in the way that it rode and the way that it handled. But it's absolutely not. It's a, it's a properly good bit of kit. There's a lot of good things going on in this bike and there really isn't very much to dislike. Um, the styling's great, the comfort's okay, but really the overall thing that I will take away from this is just that riding experience just made me grin from ear to ear all day. And on the roads we were riding and the type of day it is and the type of mood that I was in, I really wouldn't have wanted to be riding anything else. Listen, I've waffled on for far too long, folks. I've been towed. A big thanks to Fantic for having us along for this one. And uh, if you've liked that review, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of Visordown's latest videos. And for all the latest news, reviews and motorcycle features, get yourself over to visordown.com. Thank you.